Hi, you're listening to Everyday Superpower, a place where you can take some time to learn to understand the benefits of being able to read body language and nonverbal communication. Um, essentially learn a superpower in the fact that in real life you're going to be able to read the minds of those around you and those whom you communicate with, okay? Even if you were to watch people from afar communicating, you'd be able to read signals as to which they wouldn't be able to see in each other. Um, you're going to be able to learn to identify liars, people who are attracted to you, people who aren't attracted to you, and most importantly, you're going to be able to understand the signals you yourself send out into the world on an unconscious basis. Um, if you enjoy what you are going to learn, click subscribe, and without further ado, we'll get on with the lesson. Thank you. Right, so we've got a fun lesson ahead of us today. We're going to be talking about the constriction of the pupils, right? We're going to be talking about constricted pupils. If you can have a look at the photo on the video, the constriction of the pupils is when the pupil of the eye goes really small, all right? It's the opposite of the dilation of the pupils. The dilation means the pupil expands and grows larger, whereas the constriction is smaller. Uh, we know this as snake eyes. This behavior is the undilated pupil or perhaps narrow pupils, right? So this behavior is very interesting as we cannot control it whatsoever. Um, we can control a lot of our face consciously and uh, it may be in the forefront of our minds to put a face on for someone, but we can't control our pupils, all right? So it's a very honest and important um, behavior to check out whether they're dilated or constricted. When we see something we don't like, our pupils constrict, all right? When we see something we do like, our pupils will dilate. Now, I have to start by saying this because it really is the most important context to take into consideration when looking at the pupils of someone's eyes. The pupils of the eyes will generally adjust to the lighting of the area. So, and this, this, this applies you know, this applies to our fear, which we're going to get into. So when you're in a light room or if you're under the sun and in a generally just light area, the pupils will naturally constrict to let less light in, OK, resulting in no damage to the eye. All right. Whereas when we are in a dark area, a dimly lit area, our eyes will uh, dilate. OK, so our eyes will dilate in response to that. And that is to allow more light in so we can see and have better visibility. OK, so take that into consideration. All right. But these behaviors do work in, um, you know, real time. So even if the pupil is completely constricted in a light area if you were to say something to someone which triggers the dilation you may just see a momentary expansion before bouncing back to the uh, natural constriction and vice versa all right so you'll be able to pay attention and see it happen in real time uh, so most importantly take the environment into context okay now when the pupil is constricted we're focused. Our pupils constrict in response to fear. All right. So we need to see more accurately and zone in on what we're looking at rather so than focusing on everything about us. All right. You can consider it tunnel vision. We need to look direct at what we're looking at. So the constriction of the pupil represents that. Let's say you're going on a date with an individual and you say something as to which their response is a constriction of the pupil. All right. I'm going to say, for example, you've um, acted in an aggressive manner, which has triggered the constriction of the pupil that may have initiated a fear response. All right. You've triggered a threat response in this individual as to where they need to focus on you. OK, whereas if they were attracted and at ease with you, their pupils may be dilated to do the opposite, to take in more of you, to absorb more of you because they like what they see. It's actually blocking you out with the constriction because they have to find focus. All right. Rather so than absorb everything they can do. We like what we see and we want to see more of what we see. So our pupils will dilate, dilate in response to that and they will constrict in response to a negative stimuli. All right. 
So you'll see this behavior within people watching horror films and in the face of threat, their pupils will constrict. Okay. Cause they need to be focused and it's a, um, you know, a biological hardwired trigger response, uh, to threat. All right. Um, it would come alongside the freeze response okay so when an individual freezes and needs to pay attention as to what's around them such as when they are surprised or shocked um, the constriction will happen so really to put a long story short if you are to apply this in a dating or courtship context you just generally don't want to see it uh, you want to go on a date in an area which isn't necessarily too bright, all right, because that provokes a natural dilation to the pupils and within the pupils being naturally dilated, it subconsciously um, communicates a positive, you know, correlation to what they see, all right. And considering we mirror each other, our pupils will also... Uh, flare up in response to looking theirs in the eye okay so hopefully this has been of benefit if you to take one thing from this video what i'd like you to take uh, into consideration and really apply it to your life is when you look somebody in the eye pay attention as to whether their pupils constrict in response to you saying something or whether they dilate okay um, i'll finish off on one last um, you know experiment you could really um, pull off all right so if you have a partner or a family member or somebody who would like to um, you know ex experiment with you in regards to that so you can learn and see it for yourself just speak to them and say okay I'm going to say a few things and I just want to pay attention to your eyes and to how they respond all right so from there you could perhaps say um, one of their favorite foods and potentially see the dilation of their eyes in response to their brain, um, you know, absorbing that information and potentially thinking about that food. And then you could maybe, you know, talk about, oh, you've got to go to work tomorrow or something negative, but not necessarily, you know, traumatic, but bring up something negative as to which you'll see a real time constriction of the pupils and it will all make complete sense. If you enjoyed this video, press subscribe. Thank you.